My name is Sakit Sethi and I run an architectural practice called Archaeologics which I've been running for the last decade. Uh, off late I also host a TV show on NDTV which is called uh, Lux Interiors. So I'm trying to have a little fun and dabbling with different directions and possibilities in my career including Godrej Design Lab entry this year. I think good design just makes sense immediately. But I think good design for me is something that instinctively makes sense. When you look at it, you think it can't be more than what it is. It fulfills a promise of what it intends to do. And I think it provides many subconscious feedbacks to the end user. So the first iteration of this product was called the Petaloid Voronoi. So if you see the detail of the table, there are these sort of petals and they're held together by these stems and their bases and they, they are inspired from nature. But you also have the potential of a bit of a fuzzy log logic where you create different patterns or different variations from that. And then of course we use, we use 3D CNC milling to uh, create the bases that responded in some way to the inverse uh, design of the, of the petal. You know, it could have been easy to produce the entire piece as a 3D printed piece, but then what would we have learned from the first season? Back here at GDL again with another table and this time we're taking on the next generation of the 3D printed table that we approached for the first season. Why don't you just walk us through your project and tell us about your thoughts, intuitions, concerns, whatever you, whatever sure. you were thinking. As I said, uh, we, when we did the AL crochet table last year, we wanted to do something this season that took on those ideas on a more commercial or viable basis. And so one of the things that we realized is that the volumetric density of 3D printing and the cost of it made it unviable. We wanted to do a product that would allow entry level 3D printed product uh, or a table to make its way into an Indian home. So one of the ideas is really to keep the geometries of the base completely different. Uh, so it's pretty clear that the randomization of the top and the regularization of the base may become two different things. If that rectangular profile as the base isn't getting you anywhere, right? I mean, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. right? If it's acting as too much of a mm -hmm. hindrance. I think that the, the challenge is this, that if it's an irregular geometry, it's always irregular. Um, what I want to give the user at the end of the day is both regular and irregular geometries. And I think where you can definitely help us is how we're dealing with it from a finish quality and basal point of view. I think our challenge really is in the base. I think with enough iteration we could get to whatever this needs to be. So it was really good. I think it touched on some very important design decisions. I'm personally a detail-focused person. I would sacrifice form over kind of robustness and quality of detailing and, and those types of things. There's a top, there's a stem, and there's a base, but each one is unique. He's gonna to have to come up with a general design and manufacturing um, process around that. I think we're fairly sorted on some of the aesthetic things. I mean, the good part here is that, that there's a very clear visual of what the product's going to be. It's not going to be something dramatically different that when you're going down this route, you realize that the product's unviable or you want to change it. So that's not what's going to happen. But I think the specific issue is getting it so perfect, for lack of a better word. And so if you really get it to a point where it's good, um, that might not be good enough for us this time around because we've already established that point. And I think there will be a curiosity about the product uh, when we showcase it that, oh, you know, this was done last year and how is this different or how is this better? So I think the specific challenge or the worry is to get all of it right uh, with as little of wastage or iteration or going off track and coming back at it by accident, you know, everything would have to be very specific. Today I'm here for a quick review at the Metal Fabricators uh, workshop where uh, my office person Saki is here coordinating the same. 
We want to make sure that the legs that we're developing for the table are detailed and properly aligned to the receptacles that we have both in the petal and the base. And let's hope everything's on track, otherwise we'll make sure that it needs to be modified accordingly. How's it going? Yes, yeah, so we're just uh, measuring the heights, making sure uh, all of them are on the same level. Okay. Like I said, no, you want to watch out for things like that. You yeah. Make sure that it's there's no turn that around. Ye jo upar nahi aa raha hai na, wo andar jana chahiye, blend hona chahiye. Aur iska jaise yahan pe ghisai bahut acha hai, ek do jagah mein ye perfect hai. Shayad udhar aur udhar to ghisai pura theek hai. This datum point of yours should be the same across. So from here to let's say, let's say wherever you are ending this receptacle. Yeah, now they're all at the this. Top of the. Uh, you have to check and see in all the yeah. pieces what is that ending point. So ये भर भराई उसके ऊपर आता है. इसको calculate नहीं करो. ये joint point और वो joint point calculate करो. So we have a few issues in terms of the metal work that is meeting uh, the CNC components. And we find that they're not really aligning three-dimensionally. So the priority that's been given to the team is to first focus on the stability of the product and make sure that it's standing right. Then the idea is to uh, fix the details with the stems, to focus on the finishing. Right now for us, time being of the essence, we need to make sure that the product's going to be ready in time. If you see, there is a correspondence between the petal work and the base work and the way the tables fit together with the petals had to be the same way that they fit together in the base. Uh, so there wasn't necessarily a lot of design development there. So it's a really interesting example of a change in the design of the stem. So initially, I wanted the stems to be exactly like you would find in nature. So you see an absolute curvature beginning from the point of a base and that you can see in the, in the previous design. And you see an absolute curvature from the base. And in investigating that, we realized that wasn't really efficient. So the design then to change the center of gravity became more straight and then branched out. And in some cases, we realized that we would want more than one brand. Each particular table decided to have its own right kind of support. At the end of the day, the support dynamic dictated the, the, the shape and form dynamic. The optimization of the formlets and the form of the table meant that you could walk into a store and pick up just a side table or just a coffee table or just a, uh, a side table that, that you know maybe can even be used in the, in the bedroom. It doesn't necessarily need to be in the living space. But then again, if you want to buy the entire piece, you can too. I'm really happy I've seen the pieces. I think they're all working really great. The finish is really extraordinary. I, I didn't expect it to be as well finished as it is. I think now the focus is on the interlocking between the 3D printed pieces, the CNC work, and just making sure that everything kind of dovetails together. It's been really intense trying to squeeze everything together and get this product done. There is an emotional attachment to GDL now. I feel part of some sort of family of people who are creating things and I believe very strongly in doing that and are part of this movement where the parent organization believes as strongly. And one thing I do want to say is that I haven't really seen GDL compromise any designer's vision, which I think is incredibly important and that you would receive that kind of support globally anywhere. So I think that's, that's uh, what I feel very strongly about when it comes to GDL. So Saki is an interesting guy. We've worked with him now for two years. Each time he's managed to magically find the most expensive and the most difficult product to try and prototype. 
So sake's always made things that are sort of created for very particular types of people. So it's created for somebody who's got a whole bunch of money because the stuff is very expensive to make. Um, it's also created generally for people who have a particular kind of taste. So it is different from everything else we see at GADL today because most of this is designed and created to work for people across a wide, wide sort of range of tastes and styles and, and expectations. I had never thought of 3D printing in, you know, interior design or like home, uh, home furnishings or home furniture. So I think that was a very good use as well. And he'd done it very well as well. White combined with golden gives a really royal look to the design. Uh, combined it with an upcoming technology which is 3D printing. So that's really fascinating. And it looks inspired from a tree kind of thing with that branches coming out and then forming an entire table with different parts on it. It's really nice. I guess Saket brings bling to GDL. That's what he does.